welcome to AAD 15, which is one of our courses, uh, this one week courses that are uh, tailored to uh, give you guys um, introduction and understanding on different programs that architects use in everyday life, I guess. Um, so this one is going to be focused on giving you the basis uh, for working in Revit. So I'm going to probably record three videos, three tutorial videos, just showing from start to finish how to produce a very, very simple, very, very basic project in Revit. So the course itself uh, has a website, of course, and uh, as Learn students, you already have seen the course. Those of you who are not Learn students can also kind of jump in, uh, jump into the website by just um, writing down this this address here. And in the course, we have a lot of information here, but that's not 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 that important. What's important is um, where is it? Oh my God, I, I will need to reformat this. Uh, what's important is what kind of a client you're going to choose, your, your fictional client for, for the project, and also uh, this uh, supplementary material, right? So we will not be starting from scratch. We will be using a 3D model that I've made um, to, to get you guys started, to just have some sort of a environment ready. Uh, for us to model in. So there are these two uh, links here, Site 3D Model in SAT format and Site 3D Model in Rhino 5 format. The reason I use Rhino 5 is because um, I, I just make sure that everyone can follow along, you know, with the older version of Rhino. So I have already kind of made it and downloaded it and so on. Once you do that and you open it up, you will see uh, this 3D model right here. <clears throat> so the task of the course is going to be um, to 3D model out some sort of a building in between these two. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a challenge. Uh, it's, it's quite a narrow one. And these are called narrow buildings for a reason, right? Um, right, so we will, let, let's just take a closer look at it in Arctic view. There's nothing fancy. I believe I just extracted some DWG file from uh, Lund City um, and just modeled out a few, few buildings from that DWG file. So we are now looking in Rhino, but this course is about Revit. So let's stop looking at it in Rhino and rather let's look at it in Revit. So in Revit, once you open up Revit, you will be presented with this uh, window here. Um, and basically, it's asking you to create a new file, right, to, to start working. So we will do exactly that. I will click on New, Models, New. And here, it's going to ask me what kind of um, template do I want to use. And it uh, asks you whether or not you would like to use imperial units or metric units. So I will be using metric, of course. Um, in, in Sweden, we do use metric system. Um, and if you don't see it here, you can always click on browse and then expand the top uh, bar here, go back to uh, templates. So one, one floor up, or so to say. Um, and here you will see English or and we just, uh, let, let's go for um, English of uh, default metric. We can use that one. So it's, it's either one you, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll use default metric. That, that seems fine. I'll just hit open. Yep, sure. Hit OK. And it's going to load up a new file for us. Once that's done, I will immediately save it uh, just so that auto-saving kicks in, and if it crashes or anything like that, I don't lose a lot of information. So I'll go to File, Save As. Uh, or can I just save? I'll save, yeah, I can just save. Well, here I'll just save it to my desktop because I don't have a folder for it. 
ADA 15 uh, tutorials. Sure. Hit save. That's it. So, so you're done with that. All right. So let's start with me showing you the user interface, or rather kind of quickly going through the user interface. So here in, in the right and the top, you have a few mostly used uh, shortcut buttons, uh, such as open file, save file, plot, uh, undo, redo, check dimension, and, and so on, right? Um, so those are kind of handy. Uh, but I don't tend to use them that often. If I need to save something, I'll just click on this file tab and just choose to save here. I don't know why, but that's just how I do it. Um, and here, right below those shortcut buttons, you have your tabs. Your tabs where uh, all of the tools <clears throat> in Revit are located. So I already showed you the file tab. Well, it's not really a tab, but the file button here for opening a new file uh, or creating a new file opening up a file existing one saving all, all of that good stuff um, so that's not interesting but what's interesting is these tool tabs here so you have architecture we will be using quite a bit of it uh, of the tools in architecture tab of course uh, this is like the main one structure tab uh, we will almost not be wait let me see no we will not be using uh, anything from the structure tab even though it's it's super for for engineering purposes but th since this is just a, like a proposal level an entry level project that we're doing uh, we don't really need need it um, then we have steel precast and systems tabs all of these are engineering related we don't care uh, about them. Insert tab basically lets you import or insert stuff that's not native to Revit, such as DWG files and, uh, and whatnot, images. We will be using a little bit of it. Annotate tab, um, actually quite useful. I'm not sure if we will be using it though. Uh, maybe text, we, we'll see. But annotate is basically dimensions, text, uh, uh, tags, symbols, all of that good stuff is in the annotate tab. Analyze, we will not be using that. Massing and site. Um, hmm. In this case, uh, for, for this particular course, I'm not sure if we are going to be using it, but in AAD, AADA20, in the next course, I believe we will. Uh, so you'll need to wait for that. Collaborate basically it helps you if you're working in a team. Uh, tools here uh, help you collaborate with other people working on the same project. Quite a strong tool, uh, but given the situation of, of of COVID and not not being able, all of us not being able to be in the school, uh, we will be skipping skipping this. Uh, tab right here <clears throat> view tab quite um, yeah we will be using it quite quite a bit um, basically just is used to make sections to extract 3d views elevations and also changing the the, the graphics of the drawings themselves i will be revisiting it quite a bit manage add-ins and modify um, these three tabs we will not be using uh, that much. Well, modify tab, you will notice when we will be um, double clicking on, or changing some sort of geometry, modify tab will automatically open up with additional uh, tools uh, that, that can be used for that precise geometry. For instance, if you create a floor slab and you want to edit the boundary of the, of the floor slab, uh, then you, um, I, I believe, double click it or click on edit. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not a Revit user, by the way. Um, but it will open up the modify tab where you will have additional tools available for you to modify the boundary of the floor. Uh, you'll see that in action in just a second. Okay, so that's all about the tabs. <clears throat> then here on the left hand side, you have the, uh, the properties. So these are the properties of every piece of geometry that th there is, if uh, that you have selected. Sorry, 
if you don't have anything selected, that means the, the, the properties will show you uh, the settings for the view itself. And in this case, we are in level one. So we're looking at the top of, for, for level one. That's, that's our view. And it's basically the properties or the settings for that particular view. Uh, once we have some geometry in here, I will talk about the properties a little bit more. Uh, then we have our project browser, which is basically all of our views, all, all of our floor plans and so on are going to be located here. So right now, since we loaded up the default template, uh, it already has a few, uh, a few views set up for us. And actually, it has too many. So we don't need that many views right now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I will probably get rid of yeah, let's get rid of them. So for instance, ceiling plans, we don't really need any ceiling plans whatsoever. So I'll just single click to select level one and hit delete. Single click to select. Just make sure that you are deleting ceiling plans, not the floor plans, right? I select level two, delete. Don't need those. As for elevations, we will be creating our own elevations, so we don't really need that as well. So I'll delete the east, north, south, west elevations as well. All right. So now we, we only see level one, level two, and site. Actually, level two, I will get rid of that as well. Okay, so now we only have level one and site, uh, two, two plans. I want to import my geometry into the model, right? Uh, sorry, my geometry by my geometry, I mean the surrounding environment into this Revit model uh, to actually have something to work, work with. To do that, I will go to uh, insert. I'll choose to import CAD, right? Import CAD which is going to basically ask me uh, where's the model and what kind of format should I use. So as you can see here, it does accept Rhino files, which is great. We, we can use the, the, the Rhino file, AED815 site, that's fine. <clears throat> or uh, if that gives you an error, sometimes it does, just to be safe, uh, there is also an option to import SAT file, ACIS SAT file. Um, so that SAT file is also located. Uh, let me just that right here. Site three D model in SAT format. So if Rhino gives you problems, importing Rhino gives you problems, just import the SAT file. Uh, I'll import the SAT file, I guess. So I'll select that. Uh, select the SAT file that I have downloaded. Um, blah blah blah. Import as category. So that's an important one. Uh, basically, in Revit, every piece of geometry belongs to a geometry category, right? So Revit needs to, to know what kind of geometry is it. Is it a column? Is it a ceiling? Is it a door? Uh, you know, what, what is it? So here, uh, our site model is neither one of those things, right? So we will be importing it as, it as a generic model. So I'll hit on open. Generic model is basically, um, yeah, just anything, um, geometry that doesn't have a type. And it seems like it's import, it has been imported uh, good enough. Seems like it's fine. Okay, so we have our geometry here. That's great. And we have these doodads right here, which we don't really need. So these are leftovers from where we had the elevations, elevation views. These were markers for elevation views. I think I'll just delete them. Delete, delete. So I'm just selecting them. Uh, just click, delete. <clears throat> Click the link. If you don't have them, that's even better. <laughs> okay, so we have our top view of our generic model. That's cool and all, but we kind of want to 
uh, also see it in 3D, right? You know, ju just to uh, understand uh, how well did it import. So to do that, we can go to view and we can create view tab and we can create 3D view. Bam. That's it. <clears throat> That's all we needed to do. Um, so now on to how do we navigate in the viewport, in the 3D viewport in Revit. So you do it by holding down the shift key <clears throat> and clicking the scroll wheel, clicking and dragging the scroll wheel, you can rotate. If you just click and drag the scroll wheel, you pan, scroll wheel, <clears throat> God damn it. scroll wheel turning, zoom out, zoom in, right? That's, that's that. Right now, there's not a lot of things going on here. Nothing too fancy, um, but that's fine. All right, so we have our 3D model here. And let's start creating some, or rather preparing to create some, um, some geometries. So what I like doing is, oh, by the way, sorry. Every view that you open will be... Uh, shown here in these tabs so you can easily switch between them or you can just double click on the on the name of the view here level one uh, so in, in Revit you always work not always but most of the time you work in plan views like um, what would be a good example like in sims <laughs> like in that video game sims um, you kind of work in plan view and the 3D view is just a represent it, it, it becomes like a representation of that. So all of the drawing and um, drawing of walls and whatnot is done in plan view. So in level one. Okay, so let's start off by actually giving it a few axes. That, that's at least what I like to do. In this case, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I still like to do it just to keep it clean. So I'll go to Architecture tab, and I'll choose Grid here. Grid. Bam. And as you can see, immediately once I chose the Grid option, it gives me, uh, it, it, it takes me to Modify tab, where it basically asks us, how would you like to place the grid? Where would you like to place the grid axis? Uh, so I will do that by just clicking on these endpoints. And the snapping is kind of kind of nice in Revit. Uh, so I'll click on one of the corners of the surrounding buildings and I'll drag out the grid line here. So that's our first grid line. And I'll do the same thing for the second one from here here and align them perfect so that's our grid axis one and grid axis two um i could do grid axis three and four maybe we should so grid axis three um i wonder should it should we do it here or should we do it here let's do it here so that's our grid axis three. Oh, come on. There we go. And that's going to be our grid axis four. Bam. Done. Once you've done that, you just hit escape. That's all. That's all. Right? So now I will just clean them up a little bit. <clears throat> so I'll click on this uh, arrow key here, or I believe I can just hit escape once more. Um, and then it will automatically go to my arrow key or arrow tool. I'll select, let's say, grid axis three, and I'll add this this markup three. I will add it to the other side as well, right here, three. So let me do that again. You select grid axis three, and there's a tick mark box on the other side, right, which you tick. And then it's basically, it understands that, oh, okay, I need to show uh, the grid axis. Okay, that's good. For grid axis four, we do the same thing. We find that tick box here. Sometimes it's hard to see it. 
Of course, it starts auto saving. <laughs> uh, let's wait. There we go. Read access four, then there. Same thing for access one, and same thing for access two. So let me drag them out a little bit so that it's uh, nice and tidy. There we go. Up. Oh, there we go. I might need to scooch, to scooch uh, grid axis three and four closer uh, to the to the building, but that's gonna be done later. For now, this is good enough. Um, so in architecture, you don't really have a grid axis going in both directions being marked uh, in numbers. So if in one direction grid axes are marked in numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and the other one, uh, they're going to be marked in letters, A, B, C, D, E, blah, blah, blah. So here for grid axis three, where it says name, uh, let me do that again, maybe it's a little bit too fast. I'll select grid axis three, and I'll say that, no, this is not three, this is A. So I select it. Uh, once I selected the properties changes and here where it says name, I will just change this to a Hit apply Very good Same thing for uh, grid axis 4 instead of 4 I change this to B There we go Okay, so now we are all set. We are all set to start uh, start making our building Right, so before, um, I wonder which, which, yeah, let's start with walls, right? I think we should start with walls. Um, so to, to add a wall, there is this wall tool, duh, <laughs> of course. It's under architecture tab, wall. <clears throat> if I expand it, I can see that there are a few options here, but for now we don't care about those options. We just care about the regular wall tool, right? So I'll not be expanding that uh, that tool. I'll click on the wall tool, and before I start just going to town drawing it, I will choose instead of having basic wall, generic 200 millimeters, I will choose a thicker one. Actually, the one that, that we should be using is like 400, 500 millimeters. But we don't have it in, in this um, drop-down list. So I will probably just, uh, just say, yeah, screw it. Let's do 300 millimeters. Who cares? Right? But usually, you, when working in an office, you do have a library, that office itself has a library of walls that that office uses, right? Um, and, and then you can just choose from, from that library. Here it's just generic stuff. So yeah, sure, we will just use generic stuff. So 300 millimeters it is. Um, I believe in, in Sweden, it's, it's right now the regulation is around you can't get away with walls that are thinner than around 500 millimeters due to heat insulation being so, so thick. But I, I might be wrong about that. At least, at least in the Baltic region, it's, it's 500 millimeters. But 300 is fine here. Um, okay, so we have our wall type. Then we have our location line. And also it's, it's kind of, um, the mostly used settings are kind of here in the, in the top row, uh, where it basically asks for what kind of height the wall should have, um, what's the location of the line. So let me explain how, uh, how that works. So, two, two, two. height of the wall, Let's do unconnected, right? So it's, it's height and it's unconnected, right? And the, the unconnected height from level one upwards here is set to be 8,000 uh, 8, millimeters, so eight meters, right? Um, and 
so that's fine. That's fine for, for us right now because I'm just showing you how it works. Um, but the nice thing about it is that you can have it connected to the second floor, right? So if you change the height of the second floor, the height of the wall will change as well. I will show that in just a second. Um, for now, let's have it unconnected, 8000. Location of the line, center line. Um, so if it's center line and I start drawing a wall, you can see that it draws as if that, that line through which I draw the wall is right in the middle of the wall. So I don't really need that. I don't really want that. Um, I want the wall to go inwards here, right? So instead of uh, center line, I will say finish face exterior, right? And then I'll start, start drawing the wall as if it's, um, not as if, but I will start drawing the wall clockwise so that the exterior is, is, is on the outside, like that, like that. So I'm just kind of snapping it. Bam. That's it, right? We have, we have our wall. If I check it in 3D, I kind of look at it. That's our wall that we just drew. And it's exactly 8 meters high, right? Let me jump back to level 1 to just uh, see a few more, uh, a few more settings that, that can be changed. So let me delete that altogether. Um, grab the wall tool again um, and, and continue on with, with the with the settings. So here we have um, chain. Chain is basically once you finished drawing one segment of the wall, it will ask you to continue drawing the other segment and then the other and then the other, right? So it, it chains segments of the wall, uh, like a polyline. It basically works like a polyline rather than a line tool. Offset is basically, um, let's say 250 mil offset from where we draw. And that's a bad offset. Uh, let's say offset minus 250 to the other side. Oop. So you can see it draws the wall with an offset of 250 millimeters from our reference line. So that's uh, sometimes handy. Uh, this time it's not. So let me, yeah, okay. Uh, so offset. Um, resets itself to zero if you escape out of the tool. Radius, um, have no idea what the radius is. We can actually check. Yeah, it's a little bit laggy. Ah, yeah, okay. So radius is basically a fillet of the wall. So we don't really care about the radius. Um, at least for, for, for my example, I will not be using any fillet. Um, Corners. And join status allow or disallow. It's basically when you make a corner of two walls, do you want them to merge into one, uh, one geometry? Or not geometry, but would, should all of the layers inside of the walls kind of merge together nicely? Uh, so I always have it set to be allowed. All right, uh, let's actually do, do something. Let's draw something because this is getting boring. So. I'll go to the website, and here I will just quickly read that um, we have three clients to choose from, right? Annabelle, which is an arts curator, uh, Brian, which is a car enthusiast, or Clementine, which is a musician. And I think I will go for Annabelle in, in, for, for this particular tutorial, just because I don't know. A, for Annabelle. <laughs> um, and B for Brian. Huh. So Annabelle is an arts curator and is looking to expand her gallery. She wants the ground floor of her house to be open to public and should work as a small art gallery exhibition area. She will live above this gallery, so all other floors need to be private. Okay, 
Her stylistic uh, preference is minimalist, which uh, with occasional strong color accents. She has a, uh, she has a cat, no family, so that will help us determine the the, 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 the living room or, or bedroom area and, and so on. Okay, uh, first floor public, second floor private, uh, gallery in the first floor, um, all other floors are living spaces. Easy. Let's jump back to Revit and let's, let's plan this out. So um, you have a street here, right? And you have people walking along and you have uh, you want this area to be the, the arts gallery, right? So I will say, um, I will say the arts gallery itself is going to be, or rather the entrance is going to be pushed in a little bit from the street so that there can be like a small gathering before an arts uh, exhibition opening or something like that. People like to go outside and smoke and have a chat and not stay indoors that much. So you do need a little bit of space in the front, right? You don't want them to just be standing here on the street. So I will be insetting this, uh, this building a little bit inwards. Uh, to do that, I need one more grid line because I like to keep things tidy. So I will choose my grid tool here. And instead of uh, drawing the grid line, <clears throat> I will do one... Um, one fancy, not fancy, but one additional like thing with it, which is instead of here, instead of drawing a line, a grid line from point to point. Oh, by the way, sorry, forgot. When you hover your mouse over a tool, it will show you what that tool does. Very handy. Um, I will choose this tool right here. Pick lines. Pick lines will help me determine from where do I uh, from which line do I create a new grid line, right? And then I will say that actually I will, my plan is to pick line B, this, this grid line here, right? Come on. Okay, it doesn't let me, but that's fine. It, at least it lets me pick the, the, the street, uh, street line. That's fine as well. So I will be using this line here. And I will be offsetting it inwards by, I don't know, 1.5 meters, something like that. I think 1.5 should, should do the trick. Yeah, let's do 1.5-ish uh, meters. So I am picking the line with this tool. And here, when, where it says offset, I will choose 1,500 for the offset, right? And then I just pick this line and already, without clicking, it already shows me where it's going to place the line. If I want to place it on the other side, by the way, I can, um, I can just type in minus 1,500 and it's going to place it on the other side. Okay, so click. That's it. Created third. Um, why is there... Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry about that. For some reason, there, there was um, grid line D as well. I don't want that. Again, grid, pick line, 1,500. Um, come on. Bam. Okay, there we go. So now it just created one grid line that there was a... I explained it too, too much uh, and I made too many grid lines. Um, Right, so we have that. Oh, right, that's why. That's because I keep clicking on it without actually looking that I'm still creating grid lines. So this is how you can create grid lines quite fast with that offset, offset tool. But we don't need that. So I will just be deleting all of these. And I'll be just looking at grid line E, which I'll pull back. Uh, I'll pull back this one here. Create a tick mark, uh, not put a tick mark down. Grid line E. That's actually not E. That is the new B grid line. I wonder if it's going to let me do that. No, it doesn't. I first need to change the grid line B here to C. And this one is going to be grid line. There we go. We're Gucci. 
Okay, so that's going to be the inset of my um, of my floor, uh, not my floor, but of of my first floor uh, walls. Let's actually let's create the walls, right? So bam, walls, uh, finish face exterior, great chain, great. Let's just do it. Bam, 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 bam. Bam. And yes, I know it's right now unconnected, but we are fine with that. Okay, so we have done that, right? And if I take a look at it in 3D view, bam, there we go. We have our, our walls uh, here shown and they are exactly eight meters high which is way too much, but that's that's okay, we'll fix that. By the way, if you don't like this um, wireframe view, uh, it's not wireframe, line, line uh, hidden line view. Mm, if you don't like this hidden line view, you can always go here to the, oh wait, there we go. You can always go here to the bottom of, of, of the window and click on visual style hidden line here and choose shaded for instance and then you'll see the shaded view I just prefer to keep it uh, clean at the start so I just use the hidden line view okay Whew, we have that done so now I want to actually create um, actually connect sorry not create but actually connect these walls to level two, right? So that if I need to, for some reason, change the height of level two, I can uh, later down the line. Uh, so I will do that by, first of all, I need to create level two because here I only have level one, right? The, the ground floor level. Uh, so I need to create level two. And the way you do it is by actually um, descri describing it or, or marking it out in the elevation view or in a section view. So to do that, first of all, we need to create a section view or an elevation view. And this is where actually creating views um, before the design starts start, uh, actually makes sense, right? Um, so let's do that. Um, I will go to view here, view, and I'll choose uh, to create an elevation view. Actually, I'll make two of them, one for the back side of the building and one for the front side, right? So elevation, click. That's in the view tab, elevation, click. And it basically asks me, would I like to attach it to a grid? And not, not really, I don't really care about attaching it to the grid. I'll just do something like this, right? <clears throat> Place it like that, and it immediately looks at the... Um, at the facade that I've made. And I'll do the same thing for the side here. Maybe a little bit further down. There we go. So we have two elevations here. One and two. And I can actually rename them as well. Oh, sorry. I, I first want to move, move this bad boy away. So these are basically the points from which we start looking at elevations, or rather elevation markers. Um, I will select my table. Sorry, my table's f falling apart. Okay, so I will select one of them and I'll just take a look at uh, what, 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 can be, what can be done with it. So there are two ways of how you can select it. First one is, let me zoom in. First, uh, first way to select it is if you select the circle, right? If you select the circle, there is not much that you can that you can change here, right? You can kind of edit type uh, and 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 choose a different. Can you even choose? Yeah, you can kind of choose a different uh, style for for this markup, but other than that, nothing else. Um. Well, you can add more elevations from that point, but we don't care about it. Uh, yes, please delete it. Okay. Um, 
But what we do care about is this little arrow here, this black arrow. Once we select the arrow, then we have a lot of things that are going on. First of which, if we zoom out, we can see this box here, a partially dashed line box, partially blue line box that's, uh, that has appeared. So this box right here uh, basically tells us how wide the elevation is going to be, right? That view that we are going to generate, how wide is it going to be? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to push it to be quite narrow up until here and quite narrow up until here, right? Because that's all we need. We just need it to be there. And uh, so, so that's the width. And these two arrows here are the depth. So if I click and drag on those, I can say that I actually want to see in my elevation view, I want to see the background building if it's going to show up, but I do want to see it, right? So I am kind of describing how far we are going to see. That's one. I'll do the same thing for the other one. I'll change the width. Like that. And the length. Like that. Should be good enough. You can change the length uh, any way you want, as long as you know you sh you show the stuff that you want to show. Um, I will just rename them because I think that's that's kind of important. So let me just see which one is which. Actually, uh, yeah, it will from time to time it will ask you to save the project. Sure, I will just click on save. And here I just double clicked on elevation 2A. And I'll just drag it out. So, sorry, I, I, I'm doing it automatically. Sorry. Um, when you have uh, double clicked on either elevation 1A or elevation 2A, doesn't matter. Once you double clicked on them, uh, for the first time, they will generate the view, right? So once the view has been generated, it's going to kind of load up faster. Um, and let's say elevation 1A, you can see this border that's clipping out or clipping away our view. So I will select that border and I will drag uh, on these, these dots here, I, I'm able to drag it so that I can see more of this border uh, or within this border like that and the width I will not be messing around too much with the width that's fine and maybe we can get away with something like this so this narrow thing right here is going to be our building and if I look at it in 3d view I can see that um, okay uh, I can see that we do see a balcony here. And in 3D view, I can see balconies there. That means that elevation 1A is actually our street elevation. And elevation 2A is going to be our uh, garden elevation. I, I don't know, backside elevation. So I will just extend. Come on. Higher. It's a little bit laggy, but that's fine. That's, that's not a big deal. There we go. So elevation uh, 2A is our back elevation. So I will actually rename them because I think that's important. Um, you can right click on elevation 1A or you can just single click on its name and choose to rename it to um, street elevation come on elevation and then elevation 2a is going to be uh, back elevation there we go that's it uh, so we have that done and now uh, back to back to what we we, we had before 
uh, we, we need to specify our uh, levels, right? In, in the elevations. Actually, no. Uh, let's, let's create a section or rather two sections first and then we will uh, do the levels. So back to level one here, we do have two elevations already prepared. Now let's create two sections. So section markup or rather section is generated through the view tab as well. It's under section here. If I click on it, uh, it basically just asks me to give it uh, a line, right? Draw a line uh, through which we will cut. Uh, so I will draw, just draw a line right through the middle of the building like so. And can I click on that? Yes, I can. Okay, so right in the middle of that line, you can see the zigzag here. If I click on it, then I can, uh, then I'm able to kind of drag away that section line away from the building. I don't want it to be present in, inside of the building because I'm going to be designing uh, like walls in it and I don't want the section line to get in the way. Okay, so that's our section. Uh, it kind of works in the similar way as our elevations. You have, you know, how wide it is and also how deep it is, right? So here I'll just specify the depth like so. Yeah, I think that's that's good. So that's our section AA, right? And I can, I can rename it and so on. We will do that, uh, I think, a little bit later. Uh, I'll just call it section one for now. I'll keep it as section one. If we take a look at it, it's nothing too fancy, <laughs> you know. It's just a bunch of a bunch of lines, nothing, nothing more, nothing fancy at all. Just move it up. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, so so that is done. That's our section one, and let's do section two, a, a cross section. So, bam, bam, and. Yeah. I will be repositioning the sections uh, later, of course, uh, so that they show more uh, and that, they, that I'm not cutting at awkward places. Uh, but for now, just having everything here, I think is great, uh, so, so that you don't forget. Okay, so we have that. Section 2 is also generated. Let me just make it nicer. Bam, bam. Right now it's not, uh, it's not gonna look nice, but that's fine. We will make it look nice later down the line. Okay, Whew. almost there. Um, we will be finishing up by creating floor, floors. So level one is here. And as I mentioned before, you can add more levels as long as you're in uh, either elevation or a section view. So in elevation view, I will just go to... Wait, where is it? Architecture? Oh yeah, sorry. It's under architecture. In the architecture tab, it's level. Right? So it's not under view tab, it's under architecture tab, level, as a level to the model. Okay, so the way I'm going to work with this is I will be rebuilding. Right now I've been using the gener generic levels. I will just rebuild all of the levels from scratch, which is going to be easy, uh, quite, quite fast. So level here, and I will just say my first level, doesn't it snap? Oh, there we go, it does snap. So there's like two lines here. I need to make sure that I'm snapping to the correct one. Why are there two lines here? Let me see 3D. Oh, okay. So the two lines are there because my plate here, my ground plate has a thickness, of course. <laughs> so that's why in let's say street elevation or doesn't matter back elevation 
um, we see these two lines, right? That, that's the thickness of the ground. Uh, so I do need the first one, the top one, uh, to work as my ground floor. Okay, level from here to here. Uh, it says level three, but that's 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 fine. That's fine. Uh, level three is okay. I'll hit escape, and we will be renaming them either way. That's level three. Then I will choose to rather than drawing, I'll choose to use the pick lines tool because I have a grid line here, a uh, pick lines tool. Um, and I will say offset, you know, by how much will we offset from here? So I'm picking, I'm going to be picking this level three line, which it doesn't let me pick that well. Hello? Let me, I saw you, ah, there we go. So, we will be offsetting from this line, and for some reason... Oh, okay, so it doesn't let me pick the, the, the grid line, it only lets me pick lines from the model. That's fine, that's okay as well. Um, by, by, by specifying the offset, I will specify the height of my first floor, right? So, let's go for 3 meters. Uh, because I think that's that's just a, or maybe the gallery space could be a little bit higher. Uh, the ceiling height could be higher. So let's go for three and a half meters. So three thousand five hundred. From here, up. There we go. Level four. Right, and then, then, um, all other spaces will be three meters high. Right, so the ceiling height will be three meters. So three meters here, um, three meters here. Let's see. Let's see. Can I fit? I'm just thinking if I can fit the 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 whole building into three floors. So first floor is going to be the gallery space, which is uh, yeah, that's just used up. Second floor, um, kitchen, living room bathroom third floor bedroom work workroom no we we won't be able to to fit kitchen bedroom uh, kitchen living room and bathroom into one floor so just in case i'll add a third floor here or or fourth floor and we'll see how we can kind of work around with it so that's our levels. Now it's time to make them nice. Um, let's escape out a bunch of times from our uh, tool. And then let's just uh, make them nice in this, in, in this particular view. So here I'll just make sure that they're shown on both sides, even though we don't need it. Actually, we don't need it. Sorry, sorry. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so let's untick the right hand side and just keep it at the left hand side. And then here I'm just going to rename them. So I'll select level three and call it um, hello level three. Why do you not? Yeah, there we go. Or, okay, let, let's do it this way. <laughs> Here, where it says level 3, I'll just click on the name of it, and I'll just call it Round Floor. Would you like to rename corresponding level and views? Yes. Becomes Ground Floor. Level 4 is going to be First Floor. Yes. Level five is going to be ah. Ac accidentally re uh, double clicked on it. Uh, level five is going to be second floor. Uh, don't show me this message again. There we go. Uh, level six, third floor. <clears throat> 
And then we have level 7. Wait. Am I making a skyscraper? Let's see. Uh, so that's first uh, or ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. Ah, yeah, and then it would be fourth floor, but uh, I can just say, yeah, let, let's keep it consistent. So fourth floor. Okay, so that's done. Uh, let me now delete level one and the site. Um, floor plans because we don't need them anymore level one deleted site deleted there we go now we're good to go so that's our ground floor looks like that we'll need to kind of make it nice again but that's fine then we have our second floor third floor fourth floor fifth floor uh, or first floor actually the the way it's arranged here sucks so i'll just say zero dash ground floor 3500 dash first floor i hope you you understand what i'm what i'm doing here 6500 dash this is in millimeters how high each floor is then we have uh, 9500 dash third floor and we have uh 12500 dash fourth floor just to have all of them kind of stacked up nicely because it goes along the alphabetical order all right almost there <clears throat> not almost there we're done with the with the floor plans to say uh, with adding the floor plans so now I'll make everything tidy again by just uh, putting down the tick marks where uh, where they need to be and uh, cutting open the sections so that they are not in the way uh, while I'm doing that questions that you will have are well usually questions that students have can you just use the wall of this building of the surrounding building uh, rather than build your own wall here because it, it becomes a double wall um, the answer to that is no you can't you need to build your own wall um, then another question would be wait um, yeah can you change the style of the grid axes and the elevation markups and the section markups and whatnot uh, my answer to that is yes you can as long as you download the as you as long as you download them the, the styles i mean and honestly it's too much of a hassle to find a nice one and download it and get it get it going so instead uh, my suggestion would be to uh, just stick stick to these ones uh, and if you want to make it nicer then when you plot it out when you plot this this out as a pdf uh, change it in photoshop straight up i mean it's gonna take you what 15 minutes to uh, to change all of the drawings section markups and all maybe 20 uh, to change the section markups and all of the plans. Uh, where, is, where is the tick mark? There we go. Um, but it's it's you will have full control over the style of it. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's that's about it. So it created a bunch of ceiling plans as well. Uh, every time when you create a floor, uh, it will create a ceiling plan as well. We don't care about the ceiling plans again, and just to be sure that you're not going into the ceiling plans, uh, delete them. Because I, I get so many questions about the ceiling plans, and uh, not, not the ceiling plans, but something is not working, and then we take a look, and you know, you, you, students are drawing in, in the ceiling plan, trying to draw walls in the ceiling plan. Never works out. Okay back to here ground floor bam we have our walls um and here you can see that our walls 
are being constrained not to ground floor, but rather to level one. So let me let me explain this a little bit more. I think I need to explain this a little bit more. Every geometry in Rhino, almost every geometry in Rhino, this is not Rhino, this is Revit. God damn it. Every geometry in Revit can be and usually is attached or constrained to some other geometry or a thing, an object, which makes Revit quite parametric in that sense. If something changes, other things will follow along, which is nice, but also it adds much more settings for you to kind of remember and know about. One of those settings is base constraint. So if I select this floor, uh, this is not a floor, this is a wall. If I select this wall, right, right here, in the ground floor plan, and I choose, uh, I, I, I take a look at its properties, I can see that it's a basic wall, it's a generic wall, nothing fancy there. It does have a base constraint, right? And it's constrained to level one. That's because we drew it in level one. Even though level one doesn't exist here anymore, it's still constrained to it, so that doesn't make any sense, right? So we need to either redraw it in ground floor so that the bottom of the wall all, always will follow the ground floor, the height of the ground floor, or uh, we can just change, change it here. Base constraint, move that out, find uh, ground floor, there we go. Same thing for all other ones. If you hold down the control key, you can select many walls at once and you can constrain all of them to ground floor. So now, if ground floor moves, the walls will follow along. Then, let me actually have all of them selected. Then you have a base offset. This is basically how high um, does the, do these walls are these walls offset from the ground floor plane, right? So right now it's zero, meaning that they are right on the ground floor. And then you have, if it's 250, they'll kind of be floating 25 centimeters above the ground floor. Then you have top constraint, which is unconnected. Sure. Um, and you have unconnected height. So this is basically, it's always going to have the same height of 8 meters, and it's just going to be floating in space if you mess around with the height of the ground floor, right? If you want it to kind of snap to, let's say, first floor, right? Up to uh, top constraint, up to level 3,500 first floor, then unconnected height becomes locked, right? And what that means is if I drag this out, it's smaller, like that, right? Um, and if I go to back elevation, let's say, so, by the way, you can have two views here do something like this right so that's my 3d view of with, with those walls and that's my uh, back view right so now i can say first floor elevation this guy right here instead of 3500 i can say 4000 right and see how this moved up let me do that again from 4,000, I will switch this to 1,500. Very, very small first floor, but all of the walls, they follow along. This is super. This is very, very useful. Let's come back to 3,500. Okay, so that's great. Um, and let me close 3D view. That's great. Let's jump back to our ground floor plan and continue continue working on this. So by now, you already have like a, the, the, the perimeter for the first floor, 
or the ground floor. Now let's do the perimeter for the first floor, right here, right? So here, I want the, why does it show? Just a second. Um, pom, pom, pom. Huh. Sure. Okay, for now we will not be doing that. You will see something like this, which is okay. I will show you how to mess around with the view uh, later, um, later in the tutorials. But for now, you don't really see in the first floor, you don't see the walls which are in the ground floor. That's fine because we have these grid axes here and they are here for a reason, right? So um, with these grid axes here, I will probably specify, I, I, I will just draw another perimeter for me to work with. So I will create a wall. And here it's going to be a generic wall. It's going to start from the first floor. Perfect. Um, it's going to be actually not unconnected. So I can either specify it here or here, doesn't matter. So it's not going to be unconnected. It's going to be connected to the second floor since I'm drawing it in the first floor, right? To the second floor. Um, and it's going to be finish face exterior. That's fine. Yeah, nothing else needs to be changed. And then I'll just draw it here. And this one, I will draw full perimeter. Bam, bam. Ooh, that's not the full perimeter, that's too much of a, of a perimeter. Okay, let me try it again. Wall, yes, to the second floor, that's perfect. Uh, we draw it from here to here. Just make sure that you snap to the correct, um, that you snap to the correct uh, points. There we go, bam. That's it. Hit escape a bunch of times. Let's take a look at it in 3D view. Bam. That's how it looks like in, in 3D view, right? So I have a little bit of a, of a nook here or for people to catch a, catch a break uh, during a gallery opening or, or something like that. Also, it's nice. It's always nice to have something inset uh, when it's raining uh, so that when you kind of tumble for your keys and so on, you don't need to uh, stand in the rain. Okay, so we have that done. Actually, maybe I want this to be... Yeah, let's do one thing. So now I'm designing. I know. Sorry. Uh, bear with me. I will create a grid line, uh, an additional grid line. So I'll select, uh, I'll, I'll choose that I'm going to pick lines and my offset is going to be 1500 again. And I'll just offset from grid line A, a new grid line, which is grid line D. And then in the first floor, no, first floor is fine. Uh, first floor is fine. fine. In the ground floor, I will actually take this wall and I'll move it. I don't know if I can. Yes, I can. There we go. I'll just move it to grid line D. Perfect. Okay. So the reason why I did that is now I have a possibility to do a balcony here, right? Or for my second floor, which is great. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Let's jump back to, okay, so ground floor is fine. Right now I'm just blocking out the basic volumes, right? Um, as, as I'm 
as I'm moving forward with this. So that's uh, ground floor. First floor is here. Second floor. <clears throat> For the second floor, if that's a balcony, do we do one more balcony here? Do we make it smaller and smaller? That's the question. Let's do it simple. Okay, so here I'll just create a wall. Uh, that's going to be, yeah, locked to the third floor. And I'm just going to say from here to here, nothing fancy, from here to here to here to here to here. Something like that. That's good. I won't even show you that. Third floor. And third floor, I'm thinking of uh, creating one more grid line and doing an offset of uh, two meters. Uh, yeah, picking the line, doing an offset of two meters inwards so that it kind of aligns from grid line A to grid line E here. And the, the reason why I do two meters is uh, how did I know that it's two meters for alignment is, first of all, it's, it's always done in increments of 50 centimeters, right? These kind of uh, uh, building offsets and so on, usually around 50 centimeters. And here it's mirror, uh, one meter 500, so I just assumed it's going to be one more step, so that, that becomes two meters. Um, oops, don't need that grid line. Okay, so here I'm thinking of having it. Okay, so we're drawing a wall, but it's going to be a super small one, like that. Okay, let's take a look at it in 3D. Oh, and uh, sorry, I need to make sure that it's up to level 4. Okay, great. So it is locked to level 4 now. Um, so this is how it looks. The, the, the block out, how the block out looks like. Uh, that's not good. That's a pretty ugly... Yeah, I hate that. Thousand four hundred. No, sorry, uh, one thousand hundred and forty centimeters. Okay, so what if we do straight up ten meters? It's probably not going to be enough, huh? Well, that's actually. Yeah, but then you put on a roof and so on, so it becomes shitty again. We will need to kind of take a closer look at that and see if, 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 it, if it looks bad with the roof on. But for now, this is how, uh, this is how it looks. That's our block out. Okay, let's uh, create some uh, floor slabs, right? Because right now, if I take a look at a section of it, um, and let's just shade it real fast. Shade that section. Yeah, sure, save the project. Um, you don't really see any, any floor slabs. That's because we, of, of course, you don't see any floor slabs. That's because we haven't created any. <laughs> Duh. So let's create some floor slabs. I'll show you how to. So I'll come back to ground floor. And usually you don't really need to create a floor slab from the, for the ground floor for a proposal level uh, project because it's already on the ground, but uh, whatever. Let's go to Architecture tab, and let's choose Floor here. Floor, and it's going to ask us to, uh, basically, what kind of floor do we want? So 1,500 is a little bit thin. Um, I'm thinking more about, well, Let's see. let's see. This is only three meters. Well, yeah, around three meters. 
Actually, 1,500 is not that thin. That's fine. Let's use that. And here, I can either draw a boundary line, or I can pick walls, right? So I can just click, 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 click. That's easy, right? Just picking walls. Uh, or I can uh, pick lines as well. You know, as long as you create a perimeter, it's going to make a floor slab inside of that perimeter. This tool does that. It's really, um, really simple how it works. Um, so yeah, let me just hit finish editing mode. That's it. That's our floor slab right there. Um, right. Same thing for first floor. Actually, let's take a look at this section. So the floor slab goes down into the ground, which is fine. Um, there are going to be things that we will need to kind of investigate with with the other uh, with the, the the first floor. Also, why are you? You need to be here, and you need to be gone. There we go. So let's do first floor because it's going to be a little bit more tricky due to the balcony and the cantilever here. First floor. There we go. Uh, floor slab. And here we have um, a balcony, right? Remember that we, yeah, hope you do. <laughs> we have a balcony here. And we have a cantilever here. So let's see how we can do this. I will just pick lines for now. And I'll just say this, 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 and this. These four lines here. Except lines cannot intersect each other. Um, continue. Okay, so it doesn't let me uh, intersect the lines. That's fine. I can just draw the lines myself. That's okay. Let me cancel. Quit. Uh, are you sure you want to discard floor? Yes. Uh, so I will just do it again this time i will choose floor and instead of picking lines i will just draw my own line boom boom uh like that that like that easy right so i'm just using the line tool once i'm done i hit the accept button here uh would you like walls to go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom would you like ah would you like walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom uh, attach i don't know okay so we have our floor slab here um this is sketchy let's look at it in this section actually it looks good Okay, sure. Looks looks not not that bad. Looks fine. Uh, this one though <laughs> should extend to the outside of well, not really. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't extend to the outside of the wall. But oh, me. Uh, I know. I know. I know. I know how we're going to deal with this. So let me explain. Uh, th this wall. And this wall and this floor make a very awkward connection here. What we want is we want this wall to go into the ground as if it was a foundation block. And we could do foundation blocks, I know, but I'm lazy, so I'll just extend these walls. So let's go to ground floor and select these floors. And where it says um, base offset, I'll say minus 500 millimeters. Hit apply. Go to section one. And now they offset downwards by minus 500 millimeters. So we have foundation blocks, kind of. Good enough for this kind of project. Um, one, two, 
three three more or rather two more floor slabs and the roof but i will make a flat roof so it's i'm just going to use a, a floor slab to to make a flat roof um or should i make a angled roof i'll do both i'll show you how to make an angled roof and then i will make a flat roof afterwards so second floor there we go let's do floor and here it's going to be very straightforward it's just going to be picking walls punk, punk, punk. because there's no cantilevers there's no balcony so i'm just picking floors uh picking walls attach um highlighted walls are attached to but miss the highlighted targets um yeah sure okay uh let's see sometimes it gives you errors but i think we are ah that's why so we don't want to attach huh yeah let's let's investigate investigation time so the reason why this happened so that's fine that's okay but this is not uh the reason why this happened is that these walls the bottom ones i think or maybe the top ones no the bottom ones the bottom walls had to move down since we said to attach they moved down to let the floor slab in but the problem is that the floor slab only reaches the inside of the walls not the outside so honestly i'm going to fix it by detaching yeah let me control z delete and let me do it again actually i could have just left it as it is but uh, i, I want to show you um how to do it so floor this time I'm going to yeah sure I'll I'll pick walls again bam 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 hit accept but here I'll say don't attach right and now technically yeah now it's fine and in this section it also looks fine good we fixed it now this is going to be a little bit more tricky but we'll make it we'll make it uh, believe I believe. So third floor, the floor slab is going to go up until here, up until grid line A, while the walls end here. So we get one more balcony. And also here we get a balcony. Or do we? Wait, I don't remember. Yeah, so we get two balconies here. We get a lot of balconies. We need to take a look at that later on. Um, so in third floor, I'm going to create a floor which is going to which is going to go between grid line A and grid line C this one right here okay so let me just draw it uh it's it's just going to be faster to just draw draw it like that there we go accept uh this time we attach i believe yep um let's take a look at it in a section yeah that's good enough i think yeah okay so that 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 looks good pam 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 so we have our our volume here. Um, can I? And this is our volume with the shadows. Not much to you. So you can turn on the shadows by clicking on the shadow icon, of course. I wonder how do you how do you change this? Yeah, sense settings. There we go. Sun settings. Um, Top left now, sun settings. 
top left. Ah, there we go. Not much is going on, but you know, kind of helps you understand the, the volume a little bit better, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so we have that. Let us continue. Um, so there are two more things that I'm going to do, and then we will finish up this portion of the tutorial. Um, tutorial number one. So I am going to show you how to make a roof. So making a roof is going to be quite fun. Let's let's jump to let's jump to the third floor. No, the fourth floor. That's our where our roof is going to be. And I just need to know. So our walls go between E and B and they reach here. So it's it's between E and it's uh, between B. So here we have our floors. By the way, if you are tired of kind of playing detective and not seeing it, you can go to view range here. View range. And choosing that the <clears throat> view depth, how deep do you see, uh, goes a little bit, a little bit deeper. So let's say unlimited, sure. Unlimited view depth. Hit apply. Hit OK. And now you will see the, the floors. All of the floors below, below fourth floor. So now you see the, the walls here. Um, and we will add a roof. So this is going to be an angled roof. Click. There we go. And it's basically, uh, it's the same way as drawing a floor slab, right? You just choose, um, the, for instance, the walls. Click, 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 like that. And here you can choose, um, not. There we go. So here you can choose what kind of, uh, sorry. Mm. Having having a stroke, I, I think. <laughs> Here you can choose what kind of angle the roof will go, uh, will have. So now I'm just kind of clicking on all the walls and hitting accept, and this is the roof. And if we take a look at it in 3D, uh, it's the ugliest roof uh, that you could that you could find. Uh, let me just try to snap it. There we go. That's done. Um, let's take a look at it. There it is. So there's a lot of problems with it, right? The main one being that it's that there, there is this kind of very weird gap where the the walls end and the roof begins. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, right? So so that's that's bad, <laughs> of course. Um, and other things are, what if you don't want all, all of these slopes to be like that, right? What, what if you want um, a roof like this, right? Uh, can, can you control it? Of course you can, right? So I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm, I'm going to show you how do you fill, um, how do you not make this, this ugly gap here? Right, so I'll delete the roof and I'll create a new one. <sighs> roof, there we go. Roof, and I'll just uh, choose. By the way, you need you can choose what kind of a roof you want. Is it concrete? Is it uh, generic? I'll just say generic. Doesn't matter. Um, and here, instead of choosing the walls, I will choose. To just draw a line. I, I that's what I prefer to do. That, that, that. <sighs> Come on. 
And that's why we save, by the way. There we go. Such a mess. Yeah. That, uh, oops, slightly messed it up, but that's fine. We will fix it. And let me, that point. There we go. Oh my God. <laughs> when you zoom in, uh, okay, so while, while this is lagging, when you zoom in too much, it's going to redraw the whole model at a higher detail, and that's why it lags. Um, I absolutely hate that thing about uh, Revit, but they insist on doing it, so yeah, whatever. Okay, so here I just need to move uh, those, I'll just need to move that point. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, for now, let's just accept it. And this is how the, the roof looks like now. A little bit better. Why is it sticking out here? Why is it? Is it sticking out? It is sticking out. Did I mess up? I think I messed up. I think I anchored it to the wrong. No, I didn't. Wait. So it's not sticking out here. What about section two? And it is indeed sticking out here, but it's sticking out here because I messed up the other side. Oh yeah, that's, of course, that, that's why. Uh, that's because I, I misclicked on the other side why I was uh, right here. So this is the part that's sticking out. Um, so let's fix it. You can double click on the roof and then you can uh, change the ch change the points where, where, where they are. That. Uh, yeah, cancel. How are you even joined? Don't don't lie to me. Okay, or, or, or you can just draw it again because it's faster. Oh my God, to do it that way. <laughs> okay, so let's draw it again. Click. Click. This time, don't mess up. Click. 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 There we go. Okay. We have our clean roof. roof. Right uh, now, I'm going to click on this modify icon here so that I can select my um, um, lines. And notice how here we have the angles. So I can define um, the angles of all of the slopes of each individual slope of the roof. So here, by default, it's set to 30, but what if we do 75 for this side, 75 for this side, and then these are going to be, yeah, sure, let's, let's do 75 here as well. Why not? Why not? This is going to be fun. Okay, so we hit uh, finish. We take a look at it, and that's our new roof. Great. <laughs> so that's with 75% uh, degree angle. Again, uh, not the roof that we want. So let's double click on it again. Uh, or not. Let's double click on it again. There we go. And let's mess around with it even further. So these icons right here specify which uh, lines define slope. Right, And if I select one of these lines, let's see this one, uh, it will have a tick mark here that says define slope. So for instance, if I were to choose this line and say that it doesn't define slope, and choose this line and also say, and tick the part that says define slope, so that it doesn't define slope here as well, and change this to something more reasonable, let's say 45 degrees, and this one, change this to 45 degrees as well. Hit accept. Now we have a proper, you know, a proper roof, just like this one, right? 
well, the the walls are disconnected from it, but other than that, I think it's fine. So actually, uh, that's that's important. How do we connect the walls to the roof? So what we can do is we can go to the third floor and we can choose the walls that we want to connect like that. We choose these walls, right? And we want to say, yo, extend these walls until they attach to the roof. So attach. Uh, so I'll go to, when I have these walls selected, I'll choose um, this tool, attach top base, like that. And then I'll just simply click on the roof. So you might need to change your view or something like that, or just have two views opened and click on the roof. And click on the roof. There we go. <laughs> so then it attaches. And then you, yeah, you hit escape a bunch of times and take a look at it. And uh, yeah, that's good. That's, that, that's good. That's, uh, that's a wall that's attached to the roof. Right? <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's how you work with a sloped roof. Nothing too fancy, right? Um, another thing is how do you work with a flat roof? And this one I, I, I prefer. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I prefer flat roofs. So I'll delete this, right? So immediately the walls come back to being normal because they don't have anything to, to attach to. And instead in the floor I'll just create a floor right I'll just create a floor I will just choose um, I'll just pick walls I think yeah let's just do it sim super simple pick walls hit accept uh, would you like to walls to go up to this floor no no we don't we want to keep it as it is so don't attach uh, would you like to join geometry, cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay. And we're Gucci. So we... Uh, battery? No. no. No battery. Come back. I wonder if it's going to be alive now. Oh, there we go. Day. Okay, good. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. One last thing is I am going to be doing concrete railings. Um, so I'm going to be showing that how, how to do, you know, for these balconies, of course, they need railings. Uh, so I'm going to be doing concrete railings. Uh, you might want to do, you know, regular railings, that's, that's fine as well. It's just remember that by default, Revit has really, really ugly rails. So, you know, take it with caution, right? Use that tool with caution. I will show that in, in the next tutorial. But for now, concrete railings, those are basically walls, right? Nothing, nothing fancy. So let's take a look. Uh, I will need a, a railing on the third floor, two railings actually, on the third floor, there and there, and also I'll need a railing on the first floor. Yes, first floor railing in the garden view and uh, third floor railing. Okay, so let's start with first floor, first, ah, that's a tongue twister, first floor railing, uh, right here, right? And I'll just grab a wall. This time I don't need a th th 30 centimeter wall. Um, I'll just be using um, block work maybe. Now let's go for generic uh, 140 millimeters. Yeah, that, that's fine. So basic generic wall, 140 mil. Um, finish face exterior, height. This time it's going to be unconnected and it's going to be the height of the railing. So um, let's go for a meter. A meter is a little bit 
low for a railing, but I think that's fine. Usually it's 1.1. Let's go for 1.1. There is no... Um, there are cats there. so I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, so we do have our railing there. Oh, it even has an ugly hatch. Oh, I don't like that hatch. I wonder if we can get rid of it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, hidden line. So, this happens <laughs> sometimes. Uh, not sometimes, it's usually the, the case that uh, certain types of geometries have certain types of representation, you know, in, in certain drawings. So, this one in particular, has uh, these ugly, ugly uh, brickwork hatch, uh, which we can, I believe, fix. Okay, first of all, let me escape. escape. No, I don't want to make a floor. Quit thing cannot be under. Yes. Okay, uh, so if I select, this is going to be me actually investigating how to get rid of that hatch. Um, if I select all of these walls and I edit type, um, so I click on edit type, here we have uh, the graphics, and maybe here I can choose to not have a hatch, yeah, no pattern, hit OK, hit apply, Yeah, that, that doesn't care. That doesn't care at all. Uh, there's one more thing that I could do. Edit type. Um, basic wall. Structure. Edit structure. Um, concrete massing. I believe it's somewhere here. Um, so that's thermal. And that's concrete masonry. So I could change change it here with this block or sorry this this no, that's cut pattern surface pattern i could change it here but i really don't want to really really don't want to let's leave it let's leave it as it is for now um yeah let's not mess around with that Sorry for that intermission. I uh, hope you didn't get too bored with me. Um, let's add more uh, walls here. I can't look at it. I'm just going to uh, to change it. <clears throat> I'm just going to change its uh, type. So I'm going to select these walls and uh, just do. Um, Foundation generic, 200 mil. I could do 200 mil or 135. Yeah, that, there, there we go. Okay, so I'm, I've, I've just chose a different, <clears throat> different type of uh, wall for that. Okay, so now let's draw a wall. Not masonry, but rather 135 mil wall from here to... Oh, it, it goes along the center line. No, 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 no. So we will need to switch it. Switch it around. Yeah, yeah, save project. Um, so it, it goes along finish face exterior. Uh, it goes along, it's unconnected. It's 1,100, no. Yes, 1,100, it's chained, has this type, perfect. That's all we need. And then we just draw it straight up, bam, 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 enter. That's drawn, and then we have another, uh, we have it in another side. Notice how I'm not creating any geometry whatsoever. In the in the three D view, yeah, that's that's how you work with um, 
Revit. So here I'm going to draw up. Am I in the floor? Escape out of that. Sorry about that. Draw walls from here. Uh, oops, that was my bad. Along. Along, there we go. Enter. So we have our railing here as well. All right. Uh, I think we are we're fine. I think we're good with 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 the with the geometry so far. Uh one last thing that I want to show you before we finish up uh for for today for this tutorial is as you probably can tell, I'm not a, a big fan of the user interface <laughs> of uh, Revit and the clankiness of it. Um, so one last thing that I want to show you is called a, 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 a section box. And for that, I need to go to... So, so if I, in 3D view, if I actually don't want to see all of this crap, right? Especially here, what the hell are you? Delete. There we go. If I don't want to see all of this crap, I can uh, just create a section, just a small section of the building itself, right? So in 3D. So I can do that by going to modify. Yeah, I can go to modify tab. I can select all of the objects here, all of the objects, and I cl can click on this icon right here, which is called Selection Box. Bam. So it will create this kind of a box for me around my everything that I have selected. And I can, once I select that box, I can click and drag the side, sides of it Right? So that I only I only see my building. And also that's that's a good way of how to investigate uh, the inside of the building. So my box is a little bit, you know, the angle is not that great. So let me just switch it to top view here real fast in 3D by just clicking on the on this icon right here, top, and I will just rotate. What the? Oh, it rotates around that that point. Why? Um, again, we do it again. Rotate this time. I will actually look at the <laughs> the tools here. So I'll say center of rotation place. I will place the center of rotation here. Perfect. And I will rotate it like so. Bam. That's good enough, right? Um, that's it. Uh, then we can go back to our 3D view by just clicking on this, you know, dragging on, on, on this box here. Not box. Yeah, it is a box, right? On the top right hand side. And now I can mess around by just moving in the section box and looking at my at my geometry. Right? And that's my block out for now. Uh, I will change the angle of the sun. Sun settings. Um, still. Uh, do I even care? I don't care. Uh, so Boston, sure, I'll just change the time. Fly. Okay, that's 5 p.m. That's, that's my bad. 12. No. Morning. No, even more. Yeah, that's nighttime, right? Uh, summer solstice, apply. 9 a.m. It's good. 8. That's, that's even better. Okay. So now the sun is shining inside of my, um, inside of my building. It, it, through the section. Okay. 
I think that's that's good enough for 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 today. Uh, so the task is right now after you've watched tutorial one to make this kind of a block out, very basic block out of the volumes that you're going to have in the you know in between squished in between those two buildings uh, that you are going to put function in uh, into tomorrow. Um, so that's that's the task. Um, for those of you who are not sure how you'll manage to fit in, you know, the, the bedroom and, and, and whatnot, um, I would suggest just taking a piece of paper or AutoCAD or whatever and just drawing out the plan, basic, basic plans, you know, with the staircases and whatnot, uh, just to know what you, what you actually want to do, right? what you actually want to accomplish. Here, I am not doing that just to save time. Um, so my building is going to be worse, uh, much, much worse than, than your buildings. <laughs> um, right. So other than that, I think we are, um, we're done here. Um, go, get to work, and I'll see you tomorrow. Or rather, you will see me tomorrow. Bye.